Joining us now to discuss this as well as the crackdown on phones and computers on inbound flights from overseas to the U.S., Fred Flights, Chief Analyst of Lignet. Fred, we thank you for Skyping in this morning. J.D. Miranda, good to be here. Fred, let's start with Iraq from an intelligence standpoint. What do you make of this supposed video of al-Baghdadi with his first public appearance and that appearance coming in a mosque? Well, J.D., uh, Lignet's experts have been looking at this over the weekend, and it's, it's our lead story on the site right now. There's some confusion about this. Now, al-Baghdadi, as, as Miranda said a moment ago, this is the first time we've seen him on video. But there's questions whether this is really him, and there's questions whether he is alive. Shortly after this video was posted, there were reports that he was severely injured in a battle on the Syria-Iraq border and retreated into Syria, and he may be incapacitated or dead. Uh, this has to be confirmed uh, before we go any further analyzing what this video means. So you're getting, the, and this is very important, and it's the lead story right now on Lignet, uh, Baghdadi's health and, quote, well-being very much in question as Americans awaken on this Monday morning. That's right. Now, that report has been not been confirmed either. We don't know this was Baghdadi. We don't know the report that he was killed is, is true. And it's very difficult for, for American analysts to assess all this because Baghdadi is, is, it really works in the shadows. He's been hard to nail down. And whether he was injured or whether this is, is propaganda by the Iraqi government, we, we don't know yet. But I think through the week we're going to get a better idea. Was the video legitimate? And if it was, is Baghdadi alive? And if he's alive and it was legitimate, what was the purpose of this video? Is he trying to establish himself as the head of government? Right. And let's talk about that. What, what would it mean if this video, if it is confirmed that this is, in fact, him? What does that mean? Well, this presents some very interesting possibilities. If he is trying to establish himself as the head of an al-Qaeda stand that, or a caliphate that crosses both Iraq and, and, and Syria, he's going to expose himself. He's going to be a target that the U.S. government, the Iraqi government, could try to capture or take out with drone strikes. Right now, he's a terrorist who operates in the shadows. He's hard to nail down. If he wants to set up a, a, a actual formal government, well, there's going to be real risks to taking such a step. And what if it's confirmed that, he, that he's injured or been killed? What would that mean for the group? That is a very difficult question to answer because his leadership structure is really unknown. My theory is, given the speed and the skill with which ISIS fighters took over so much of Iraq, is that he probably has competent deputies. Maybe he has one or two who could take over for him, but that's just a guess. Well, Fred, in, in the situation that now presents itself, no matter the fate of al-Baghdadi, it, it appears that from a PR and a, an Internet sophistication side, ISIS uh, these guys understand how to get out their message. And so you take a look at that, you take a look at what they say is the establishment of the modern caliphate. One of the uh, UK newspapers uh, ran a column today saying that it, it appears that, uh, that ISIS is poised to, in essence, become the new Taliban. Would, would you agree with that assessment? I think ISIS wants to become the leading radical Islamist group on earth. I, and there are many people who say it wants to displace al-Qaeda central in, in Pakistan as, as the leading al-Qaeda group, and, and they probably want to have more influence than the, than the Taliban. They're using their PR machine to drive radical Islamist would-be fighters around the world to travel to their region and join their fight. Fred, you have a lot of experience dealing with Iran. You have 25 years of experience, you know, working for the CIA, CIA, Defense Intelligence Agency, the Department of State. In your opinion, is it dangerous for the U.S. to take sides here? In other words, by supporting Shias, are we putting ourselves at risk for more Sunni-type attacks? Well, there are many people in the United States who who have said. Let's just let these people kill each other. One side is pro-Iran, one side is pro-Al-Qaeda. I think that's irresponsible. I think we see the rise of an Al-Qaeda-like organization that could become a radical Islamist state. And I think it's essential that we weigh in to stop that from happening. I think there are costs involved. And I believe we have to make real demands on the Iraqi government to become inclusive and to bring Sunnis back into the system. 
But I think this this development is simply too dangerous for us to sit to sit back and, and let events take their course. But what needs to happen? Because already President Al Maliki has down. So what should the U.S. then do? Well, Mal uh, that's true. Maliki said over well, Mal uh, that's true. Maliki said over the weekend he's going to run for a third term. There's no right. chance he's going to step down. Uh, all the alternative candidates among among the Shia are, are unable. They're unable to come up with with a candidate to oppose him. We had to press this government to be more inclusive. We really can't demand that Maliki step down. That is the business of the Iraqi people. I think we can informally tell him we think he should go, uh, but no matter who runs Iraq, we have to push this government to be more inclusive, to stop the crackdown on the Sunnis, and to shore up their military to stop the advance of ISIS. And while there continue to be problems with uh, the Iraqi government and uh, factional strife, uh, on the other hand, ISIS, to every appearance, appears to be gaining in uh, power. And uh, while they're not 10 feet tall, we've heard talk of changes in um, in what ISIS and other groups are planning to do in terms of the goal of attacking Americans again on American soil. Now, over the weekend, we heard about uh, new rules for our TSA for inbound nonstop international flights checking cell phones and electronic devices. What have you heard about this? Does this, does this do anything besides cosmetics and making this announcement? Well, this is simply the latest development suggesting that radical Islamist groups, Al-Qaeda groups or former Al-Qaeda associates are determined to beat aircraft security. We saw this in 2009 with the underwear bomber. We saw this in 2010 when there was a bomb built into the printer cartridges of two printers. We knew about this. The printers arrived en route to the United States and the UK. British intelligence looked at them, could not find the bombs. We urged them to look a second time. These bombs were hidden inside the, the uh, printer cartridges uh, within the powder of, of, the, of the cartridge. I think this is simply another clever effort by some Al-Qaeda affiliate, maybe ISIS, maybe Al-Qaeda Al on the Arabian Peninsula, which was responsible for the last two bombs. I think this shows that the threat from radical Islam is the threat from Al-Qaeda is still very much alive, and our, our security forces have to stay one step ahead of them. Well, speaking of which, Fred, we've heard other experts say that they predict another, I hate to even say this, another terror attack on U.S. soil. What, what's your assessment on that? I, I think, unfortunately, I'm afraid that's going to happen eventually. Al-Qaeda has taken a different approach. They're now trying to, to go after smaller targets, many, many smaller targets, rather than one uh, gigantic target, such as the 9-11 attacks knowing that they only had to be successful once to score their propaganda terrorist victory. And we've seen numerous attempts since o over the last 10 years. There's been about 50. The Heritage Foundation has, has cataloged them. About 50 terrorist attacks, attempted terrorist attacks against the United States that were foiled uh, by, by U.S. security. And I think these efforts are going to continue. Fred, uh, we have about a minute and a half remaining, and, and with your chilling assessment right there, we would be remiss if we did not change our focus a little bit and ask you about the situation in Israel and what is feared to be a retaliatory killing of a young Arab for the, uh, the, th the killing of the three Israeli teens last week. What are you hearing from Israel on the growing unrest? It, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a terrible, tragic situation, and I... I I really salute the Israeli government for making it clear that they will not tolerate revenge killings. Uh, that the the killing of the three uh, Israeli youths was 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 something that it looks like Hamas was behind. These Hamas uh, operatives should should be punished. I think they've arrested at least two of them. But citizens taking law in their own hands and killing other innocent citizens in revenge is completely unacceptable and i salute the israeli government for taking a strong stand that that's not the way they operate fred flights from lignet we thank you very much for your time and as we say goodbye to you fred we remind uh, everyone who's watching for in-depth analysis of the forecast on isa and for changes in tsa screenings the place to go is lignet.com it's like your own CIA to get assessments on what is going on internationally in terms of intelligence. Great site. You should check it out. And we want to check out comments from you on this and other subjects. Why don't you tweet us your remarks at Newsmax TV, hashtag America's Forum. There's also email and Facebook. 
Our faces coming right back on America's Forum.